it's called the 15 minute close. It's a, it's a guide for closing sales. So this was developed since now it's nine years. It's been nine years since 2012. I started developing this sales process and it really got developed over my thousand client calls, right? Over, well, I probably did 5,000 client calls to get the thousand clients, right? But um, every time someone called, you know, I kind of perfected this pitch and now it's really a script that you can use for, it's meant to be used for a warm lead, but it can be used for a cold lead as well. So it can be used like in situations where you're reaching out to a product designer or a product company and you're looking, you know, you want, you want to sell their product on Amazon. They may be a little bit hesitant. This kind of, this process works through it and it's called the 15 minute close, but really it's five steps. And in the book, I, I, I divide it up into percentages. So, um, but to make it simple, uh, I divide it up into minutes for people. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. All right, what's going on, everybody? Today, we have a returning guest, Nicholas Coriano. And Nicholas has a Juris Doctorate in Law from the John Marshall Law School in Chicago. He's got a Bachelor's of Finance, a Bachelor's of Science in Business Finance from the University of Connecticut. And he runs a successful holding company where he is involved in real estate, business consulting, and a whole lot more. And we're bringing him on the show because he just released a book on Amazon called The 15-Minute Close, Rules for Entrepreneurship, Close a Warm Lead in 15 Minutes. And as everybody knows, in Amazon Wholesale, we're having to close those suppliers and distributors to let us open up those accounts. So I wanted to bring Nicholas on and have him dive into his book a little bit. So Nicholas, appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you having me on the podcast. Absolutely. This is going to be fantastic. So anything else you want to tell us about your background that I didn't touch on there before we get going? Yeah, you covered a lot. I mean, I got a real estate holding company, got a a stock portfolio that we manage at Homescape, about 20 online businesses, mostly service businesses, um, which is why Todd is not a competitor, which is why we're still friends. <laughs> no. And um, so, yeah, you covered everything. This is my third book, The 15-Minute Close. Um, I have a vlog on YouTube called An Entrepreneur's Journey where I document all my mistakes, all the things my mentors taught me, all the things that my clients have taught me. I've had over a 1,000 business plans and consulting clients at our at our company that I interact with. So um, it's been a hell of a ride and I'm, I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah, and, and we were talking beforehand, which is now public. So I'm thinking we can talk about it here, but you were just brought on by a company as their vice president for basically working on exploding their business, right? Yeah, yeah. 3DX Industries Incorporated out of Ferndale, uh, Washington. Um, they're a CNC shop, manufacturing shop, and smaller publicly traded company. And doing a, a, you know, I came in as VP of East Coast of Operations and just coming in to help them build a team, build a sustainable business. And super excited. Just I'm really, really, really excited about that sector. You know, I, I wanted to, you know, become a partner in a, with a team and a company that. I believed in the sector. I do believe that 3D printing can disrupt a lot of industries, right? The ability to just think of a design and print it right there. It's it's pretty awesome. You know? So there's a lot of inroads to be made there. And I'm, I'm just happy to be at the cutting edge there. But yeah, super excited about that. Check, every, check every, Everyone can check them out, 3DX Industries. If you ever need anything prototyped out of metal or plastic, um, they're, our guy. They're, the, they're your guy. So for sure. But yeah, excited about that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. You're out there hustling and I see you running around all the time on your Facebook posts and stuff like that. You got a lot of energy and just keep growing and growing, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, you all relate, related to Amazon. You know, I say something about Bezos taught me one of the key things about energy. It was interesting. I saw an interview with him and he says, you know, when you're super passionate about something, you just you have more energy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say, oh man, I'm tired, but, you know, or, you know, you work too much, but it doesn't 
doesn't one it doesn't feel like work i know it's a cliche it doesn't feel like work but when you're super passionate about something it just gives you more energy you know so yeah i'm excited i try to stay energized i try to stay passionate about things and i know i'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses and you know this is what this podcast is all about so i'm i'm here to help i'm, I'm happy for that absolutely very cool all right, so let's dive into your book a little bit. You just released it. So tell us a little bit about what the book is actually going on, touching on. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, it's called The 15-Minute Close. It's a, it's a guide for closing sales. So this was developed since now it's nine years. It's been nine years. Since 2012, I started developing this sales process. And it really got developed over my thousand client calls, right? Over, well, I probably did 5,000 client calls to get the thousand clients, right? But um, every time someone called, you know, I kind of perfected this pitch. And now it's really a script that you can use for, it's meant to be used for a warm lead, but it can be used for a cold lead as well. So it could be used like in situations where you're reaching out to a product designer or a product company and you're looking, you know, you want, you want to sell their product on Amazon. They may be be a little bit hesitant this kind of this process works through it and it's called the 15 minute close but really it's five steps and the book i i, I divide it up into percentages so um but to make it simple uh, i divide it up into minutes for people but really it could be 15 hours if it was a really big if it was a multi-million dollar deal let's say you're calling you know maytag or some large brand and you want to represent them on amazon this you know it might take 15 days, but the process, the steps are the same. It's a simple five steps. Um, and what we can go through them, you know, one by one. Yeah, for sure. What I'll have you do right now is just put all of the scripts right up on the screen for everybody. No, it's <laughs> just kidding. No, I can't, I can't actually, if you guys can, can we do that? Can I share the screen here? Uh, yeah, for sure. If you want to, I was just uh, joking, but uh, absolutely. Come on, man. I'm here to add value to these guys. Let me make sure. Yeah, for sure. So if you're listening on the podcast and you want to see... Can you see this? Yep, I can see it. Uh, so we'll have this on the YouTube video. Oh, this is great. Okay, great. This is even better. That'll okay. Work. Fantastic. Oh, look at us. Look at us doing something here, huh? All right. So yeah, so this is... These are the five steps. You know, I'm going to keep it simple for you guys. These are the five steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. I'll go over these... Um, one by one, but in the, I want to show you guys something. So in step one here, this is a time allocation. So if you guys are reading this, this is a time allocation. It's one minute for step one, four minutes for step two, five minutes for step three, four, and one minute for the last two steps. This is, I gave it to you down here in percentages in case it takes longer, mm -hmm. right? So it's really, this is a, about the amount of time you want to spend on each step in percentage mode. And then here, I put together a little pie graph for you guys. For anybody who's listening, let's make sure we describe everything. So the percentages were what? So the, the percentages are the amount of time that you want to spend on each section. So when I call it the 15-minute close, it could be a 15-hour close if it was something bigger. Generally, the bigger the deal, the larger the transaction, the longer it takes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're coming in off a warm lead, you know that they already want your product or service. It could be rather quickly. If you're cold calling someone to try to sell their factory or, or try to, like I said, try to sell their good like refrigerators or, you know, some widget that you think can sell really well on Amazon and you're calling that, that, that manufacturer, it might take 15 days, right? If it's big enough, it's a big enough account, right? If you're talking about a Fortune 500 company account, it may take, you know, three months, four months. And if that's the case, this is the percentages are basically the time you want to allot to it, Got it. right? As opposed to one minute, four minute. Because this, what I'm doing here is I'm going to show it to you in 15 minutes. If you're a really good salesperson and you know who you're calling and the call is super targeted, you might be able to get it done in 15 minutes, especially if you practice. If, you, if it's a warm lead, for sure. If they're calling you for something, this will guarantee that that it, it closes rather quickly. Okay, it's perfect. So this is this pie graph kind of delineates, you know, in, in the book I talked about how it could take 15 minutes, 14 minutes, but let me see if I can zoom in here. So this is, and you guys can see it on the right here. This is the process. This is the, the, the five-step process. So we'll go through these one by one and I'll just kind of put up the opening and we'll talk about it, right? So the first step, which is only gonna take you one minute, and I won't scroll too much, I promise, guys. I won't scroll too much here. 
Um, just remember this timeline, one minute, four minute, five minutes, four minute, and then one minute. Um, so the first step is nice and easy. I'll get right into it. This is when you call them, you know, your vibration, your energy, uh, how you talk to someone when you call them is important. So when the, the opening is very simply, you know, hi, how's it going? My name is, how are you doing? Right. And you kind of want to mirror them. So I give some steps in this, you know, uh, on uh, what you want to do. But basically, the way you want to end this is with good tonality and with a question that you already know the answer to. So, for example, if you're calling a product company and uh, they're selling a ton of product and you want to get them on Amazon, but you're not sure the way you should end that nice, that nice you say, look, um, you guys like to make money, right? You guys are interested in selling more product correct? You guys are interested in increasing your revenue, correct? This does a couple of things. Number one, it, it, it gets you to narrate the conversation, right? And kind of direct the, the flow of this conversation in this first minute. And it gets them to your first yes. By the time this process is done, you're going to have a few yeses. They're going to say yes, a lot. And eventually they will say yes to what you're proposing, but you have to get them comfortable with saying yes. Okay. So that's essentially the first minute. That's one minute of the 15 minute close. And then we move to the next step which is the the second part of the 15 minute close and this step is let the customer talk okay so here you have to ask leading question right so um can you tell me exactly how you guys distribute your product i'm curious because i i want to help you guys achieve what they just said yes to they just said yes to i want to make more money or i want to increase my revenues or i want to sell more product so the question is how do you guys sell the product now What are you guys doing? Are you guys online? Are you guys not online? And the only thing you want to do here is shut up. That's it. You're going to shut up in this four minutes. There's four minutes of you just staying quiet. And what that does is it allows them to start talking. Now, two things happen here when they start talking. Number one, they're getting comfortable. People don't talk to people that they're not comfortable with. So if you keep them talking, that means they are comfortable with you. They are comfortable with you. So everything should be a leading question here. If they stop talking after 30, 30 seconds, a minute, ask another good leading question. And you'll perfect this as you go along to what the questions are. Like, what exactly are you looking for, right? What how, Are you on Amazon? Have you had issues with Amazon? Have you had issues with other Amazon sellers? All these leading questions. Again, this, this step two is four minutes. All you want them to do is keep talking. So again, the first thing that happens is they're comfortable. The second thing, is that they're going to tell you exactly what their pain point is. They're going to tell you exactly why they're not doing it or why they are doing it or what's going wrong. So all you're doing in this, you want to, you want to keep as quiet as possible and take notes. That's what you're doing here. You're taking notes because they are going to tell you exactly. I mean, to the T exactly. So if you call, if you're an Amazon seller and you're like, Hey, I want to sell your products on Amazon. If you shut up for three, four minutes, and let them ramble on, they will tell you why or why not. Mm -hmm. Just straight up. They'll, they'll tell you. They're going to mention it. They're going to say it. They're like, nah, we tried that before. The guy wasn't reliable. Oh, okay, the guy wasn't reliable, right? You're going to take all those notes down. So that's step two. This is really digging for information and getting them comfortable. That is what you're doing in step two. Make sure you listen, right? The listening aspect, I want to I want to stay on this for a little while and talk about listening because people don't do this enough, not just in the sales process, but to cut customers, right? So you have to listen empathetically. You have to listen like you actually care because you are going to solve their problem. That is how you make a sale is by providing extreme amount of value by solving a problem that they have. Their problem could be not enough revenue. Their problem could be reliability. Their problem could be pricing. Generally, it's not really pricing when people are not doing something, believe it or not. Most of the time, it's not because of pricing. It may not be easy enough for them. They may not have the resources time-wise to do it. But this listening part is everything. They, they will literally give you every answer to any rebuttal in your sales process right here in this process. So it's super important. Yeah. Most people are too busy thinking about what they're going to say next and they're not actually listening. Yeah. And then what happens is, and I don't want to go over this because I have some good points. Like it does a couple of things. It lets them know exactly what you need. It shows them. It also shows them that you're listening, but you can also start to speak their language. So one of the one trick in communications is what they call the mirror effect, right? So if you're if someone comes up to you and is like, "Yo, buddy," and you respond, "Yo, buddy," 
there's a mirror effect there that shows that you speak their language, as opposed to if somebody comes up to you and say, good afternoon, sir, and you respond the same way, good afternoon, sir, right? Yeah. This, this speaking their language, this mirroring of them, again, brings another level of comfort, right? They can, you can communicate better. So that mirroring, it, this section here, this section that says, let's talk, that's what this does. That's part of what this does, is it allows the, the, the person to understand where they're coming from, understand all their pain points, understand exactly why they're going to do it, understand how they communicate, right? Let's say a person talks a little bit slower. I happen to talk fast, right? But if a client, if I'm talking to a potential customer and they're talking at a slower rate, I begin talking at a slower rate, yeah. right? To mirror them. That way they feel comfortable. That's the whole point here. People buy and people partner with people that they are comfortable. Yeah. A lot of us have experienced talking with someone where they're just like, you're not on the same page, right? They're like yeah. talking a complete different language, it seems like, and you don't feel comfortable. And if you don't feel comfortable, you're not going to buy or sell, whatever the case may be. How about this? How many, how many times have you talked to someone who doesn't let you talk? Yep. Exactly. You know, then you you don't feel comfortable either, right? If all you heard was their voice. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. People like to talk, like to talk about themselves, and they really like it when people listen and make them feel important. Yeah, and and so, for example, when I say, you know, how many times have someone has someone you know talked too much in a conversation, right? Let's say I'm talking to Todd. There's a time where it's okay to have that awkward pause to allow Todd to speak, right? Let's say even in this podcast scenario where it's like there's a give and take, right? If I don't give and let Todd talk, Todd doesn't feel comfortable. Yep, exactly. All right, so let the customer talk. So we got people get this point. This is very important. The the Again, back to that comfort stage, right? In those niceties, it's okay to go a little off track here. Find out about their kid's name. Find out about, you know, uh, if they're married. Find out if they got to work late today. Relate to people, you know, not, not just in tonality, but with what's going on in the world, right? Relate to people. That mirror effect is not just in tonality. It's not just in what you say, but it's also in experiences. So that's, now we're up to minute five, okay? So now we're up to minute five. So in minute five, through, this is basically the next, and I'll hop back and forth here, I apologize, five minutes. So this price and process section takes five minutes, okay? So this is in the middle of your pitch. The reason we put this here is because you don't wanna end a conversation where you're trying to get someone to buy something from you or transact something, and the last thing they're thinking about is price, right? It's a bad way to end the conversation because now they're thinking about the price, they rationalize the value and price, and a lot of times, most humans do not equate price and value correctly, right? So we buy something at one price that can have an extraordinary big value or a lower value. We don't, we don't really make those comparisons. So I like to put this right at the beginning. And in this pricing process, what you want to do is basically explain everything about how you are going to transact with somebody. So for example, you're calling a, a, a picture frame maker um, out of you know some town and they make picture frames and you're trying to pitch them on hey let me sell your picture frames on Amazon right let me sell your uh, um, envelopes on Amazon whatever that product is right first thing is hey this is what it costs be clear and concise people don't want to guess with pricing if you have scaled pricing there's different variations explain that here right now right away and get past it as soon as you can so if there's a price right for me in this process is say, okay, after they've talked a little bit, they, maybe they've called me for a, a business plan or a pitch deck, or I've called them to propose a business plan or a pitch deck. After we've had the, the small talk and they've talked, which is the most important part, I took notes here, I understand everything. I say, okay, my, my transition line to this step is I can absolutely help you with that. Let me explain my price and process. And I write some of my sentences. If you guys get the book, I write the actual sentences I use in transition. Um, so I can absolutely help you with that. This is my price. I charge $650 for the business plan, and this is how it works. So the price is literally one sentence. You get through it as quickly as possible, and then you go into the process. Now, that little line I said before is, is important, right? The idea of 
Um, I can absolutely help you with that. They just explained everything about it. We just got off of the four minutes of them talking. You reassuring them, hey, I can absolutely help you with that, with extreme affirmativeness, starts building the confidence that they already need, right? They're already comfortable with you. They talked long enough, so they must be comfortable. You told them, now you affirmed. I can absolutely help you. You gave them the price, and now you're going to give them the process. So after you name the price quickly, the process is basically what it takes for it to happen. This is the timeline. Do I have to, and Todd, so I can help be of more value to your uh, watchers. What, what is the process of that? Let's say you guys call somebody. So what would be a process, a standard process for that? So when we're first trying to call, or when we first call someone, usually it's just to try to open up an account. Um, so it's not necessarily we're talking about pricing on that first call. We're just trying to get around. Well, free, free is a price. So free is a price, right? For free, yeah. we're going we're gonna to open up an account, correct? Correct. Okay, so what does it take to open up an account? You're basically saying you're going on Amazon and opening up an account for me, the seller of widgets? Exactly. Yeah, we may or may not mention Amazon unless they bring it up. Um, but usually we're just trying to find out, you know, how do we open up an account? What do you need from us? Uh, what information? Um, so that's kind of the process, right? Figuring out the process, their process of opening up an account. And are you talking about for the actual uh, products? Correct. Okay, to buy the products. Okay, so in, in this scenario, on a, on a cold lead, they have the process. Correct. Correct? We're trying to get through that process. They have the point. Any hangups. Got it, got it. So again, this goes back to, you know, this let the customer talk. This is why this is so vital, this step two, right? So in your case, you know, understanding, and I, I want to tailor this. This is meant for a warm lead, whoever's listening, but I, I want to tailor this because this let, let the customer talk, right? This Let's say it's a cold reach out because I'm starting to understand what you're talking about with the product, right? Make sure you read the company's website. Make sure you read all the information about them. Make sure you understand if they're already selling somewhere else, right? Understand these things because then when it comes down to the process, anything that they throw at you should be absolutely. I can absolutely do that for you. That's no problem. That's no problem. Do you guys run in question? Do you guys run into issues with minimums? Yeah, definitely. There's a, there's usually going to be some kind of minimum order amount, like 500, 1,000, 5,000, whatever the case may be. Okay. Is that ever a bottleneck for some? I'm guessing that must be a bottleneck for some entrepreneurs. Not it definitely can be, especially for people just starting out, because if they have a $5,000 minimum order, you may yeah. or may not have $5,000. Exactly. Well, and this, this goes to, you know, this is a little reverse because they're doing this to you guys, but this goes yeah. to my next step. So after the pricing process, it goes to why you, right? So after you guys, the, the process is coming, this can help negotiate down minimums, right? Um, I like to use the example. So this is where basically this chapter is all about. You got to give out your all your credibility, right? Now they know the price. They know the process. They know who you are. You got them comfortable. Now it's why you, hey, I got a business degree. I got a law degree. Um, I sold a million dollars worth of product on Amazon. I sold 10,000 products a month on Amazon. Whatever your key highlights are, this is where you're going to get um, vocal about why you're awesome. Right. This is why you're awesome. Why you now interesting about the minimums, right? When you're selling yourself, there's two kinds of, of, of sale. People, there's two kinds of competition, right? Some people price compete and some people quality compete. And I want to make this distinction because I think a lot of people, what happens is they almost only think they can compete on price yeah. when they don't understand that they can compete on differentiation or some other kind of competitive advantage that you know, allows them to enter a marketplace in a, in a different price point that otherwise wouldn't be acceptable if you were only price competing. And the example I love to give is a Starbucks, right? Here's a business model that most people threw out of the room in, in the venture capital world because you're like a $4 cup of coffee. What are you talking about? Every corner store sells them for 99 cents, right? 
And now you walk into a Starbucks and you're like, I would never go into a deli to get a co- crappy cup of coffee. They have Wi-Fi here. It's nice. It smells good. The bathroom's always clean, right? So that I that's would, a. Uh, I would never get my coffee at a convenience store, but I also wouldn't buy it from Starbucks. I, I don't like Starbucks coffee. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me guess. Are you, are you a Dunkin' Donuts guy? No, no. I usually try to find a local coffee shop. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But but same principle. Same principle, right? The the local coffee cup, same thing, right? That you're gonna pay two, three hours. The point is, you don't always have to compete on price, right? You don't always have to compete on price. And for example, to Todd to Todd's point, you don't always have to compete with some kind of brand recognition like a Starbucks, right? The local coffee shop is the YU for Todd in Todd's instance, right? It's yeah. their competitive advantage. It's the fact that they're not Starbucks. It's the fact that they're not the other place. So this all goes into this. And what this is doing at this point, by this point, is you're building credibility, right? They were already comfortable with you. You assured them several times throughout this process, I can absolutely help you with that. Hey, that's what I do. Hey, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, I read up on you. I understand where you're coming from. Right, you've related to this person, and this last, this this fourth step really is the credibility builder. And this is, I you know, I stress this a lot when I when I explain this to clients, which is do not come up short here, go super deep here. So, for example, Todd, when did you start selling online? Oh, I mean, I've been doing it forever, but uh, more seriously, about 2015. Exactly. So, 2015. But you said something, you, you kind of, you, you you got it right on the head with what I was trying to extract, which is you've been doing this forever. You were probably an early adopter of eBay. I can, I could see you selling something on eBay back in 2000, 2001, 2002. No? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Those are the things that need to be levered down because maybe to a millennial like me, right? Uh, Nick Coriano says, so what you were selling on eBay? I was selling on eBay too, right? But the 60-year-old in charge of the product company, that's something different for that guy. That's saying to this guy, whoa, this guy's been around since for almost for 20 years selling online, which by the way is the truth. Yep. It's the truth, right? The C- the CEO, um, the 60-year-old CEO over over there, or the 65-year-old CEO, they didn't, they don't have that experience. So I always tell people in this section. Go super, super deep. Don't let anything that you think can fall by the wayside fall by the wayside. If you, especially in the Amazon world, most people that are on Amazon selling products on Amazon are early adopters. Like they were adopting things, you know, before they, you know, it happened. So the, the eBay's of the world, the Twitters, the Facebooks, all of that should be mentioned in this in this section of it. Yep, absolutely. Talk yourself up. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting um, the Amazon world because there there's really like no sales book out there that goes the way that we work it because it we're we're trying to sell them on selling to us so it's like it's always interesting but what you're touching on is so right on on a lot of points some of it like you said might be a little bit out of order for what we are doing. Yeah. Uh, but for every sales book that I read, I always pick up a lot of really good tips and you've got a lot of good ones here as well. Yeah, and I might I might actually have to re- write another one. The next one that might come up might be on cold, on cold uh, calls, on cold sales leads because uh, there's obviously a need, you know, I reach out to clients too. But yeah, a lot of the same principles, right? The, the yeah. building yourself up um, and making sure it's a credibility thing. Right. And you can't you can't fall short. So people consistently undervalue their experiences. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if you're sharing every day on Facebook, you have social media experience that a lot of CEOs don't have. And we just gloss over it, you know, because we've been here for so long. Or if you know about search engine optimization, you the, the all these things you should be talking about, right? The fact that you know about search engine optimization, you know about product selection, you know about algorithms on Amazon, you know, you don't want to leave any of it out and you want to script it. You know, that's something that I put in the book as well, which is write it down, write down exactly why you, that way, by the time you're done with this, you know, three minute spiel, four minute spiel, they're exhausted. Yep. 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot. There's of no people, reason why it's not you. Because they're like, man, this is the God. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't put a lot of value in what we're learning as we sell on Amazon. You know, the process of listing products and selling products and advertising and all that stuff. But I was just researching uh, the other day on Indeed for e-commerce manager jobs because I'm an S corp now, right? And I said, yes. I pay myself a reasonable salary. And there was an Amazon e-commerce manager and it was starting at like $125,000 a year. Yes. So this yes. stuff is, is valuable. So for anybody out there yes. listening who questions that, you know, as you're learning to sell on Amazon, you're getting like an MBA in Amazon that's valuable, so. No, listen, that is, so most, they say, I saw a study, I don't know, I don't want to misquote it, and I hate quoting percentages and facts that I don't know, but the, basically the, the thing I read that I remember was something, a certain amount of jobs that will be, that exist in 30 years don't even exist today. Mm -hmm. So they're like a large percentage of the jobs that will exist in 30 years don't even exist today. What is does that mean? That means the college education system and the current educational system isn't teaching you those skills. But I couldn't agree with you more. The things you learn on Amazon, you gloss over them, but you're talking about pay-per-click, certain keywords. You're talking about user interface, website user interfaces, right? All these things that, by the way, are the future of business. So when you want to talk about why Walmart is still around in 30 years, they leveraged Amazon or their platform or some variation of that. Like what you learned on Amazon is going to work. And the same thing with all, all of the new technologies, your social media, your Facebook, your Twitters. When you look 10 years down the line, there is going to be someone that gets paid $100,000 as head of social media for large corporations. It's, it's a super important you know, attribute. But yeah, Amazon, for sure, right? They're a behemoth. And I just got back from Seattle. And let me tell you, I'm pretty sure they would hire you. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they got a, a budget enough to hire a bunch of guys out there if they ever need it. But the real paycheck here is in utilizing what you guys are doing. You know, I think that the platform and what you're teaching these guys and exactly what you know you're doing is one of the best ways to optimize, you know, the potential there. Yep. Yep. And sales is a big part of that, knowing how to sell yourself and sell your business and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, and then we get to the close and, and you know what, I'm going to come back on this podcast in a couple months and I'm going to put together a specific sales process for people to sell, to go in and, and contact. And I'll reach out to Todd and we'll have a conversation exactly what, what we're getting at there, but I'll make a specific process. So we'll get you guys a script on exactly how to call people that have products and how to open an account and um, how to, how to move faster. With that, And also probably how to get through, some of the red tape because, you know, um, just a little side trick and we'll get to the close. The close is real simple. We'll get to that in one second. But um, a little side trick when you're trying to reach a decision maker at a company, there's a, a, a few, I'm going to give you guys two tips that have worked for me to get on the phone with public company CEOs. So that's about as hard as it gets to, to reach, right, guys? Mm -hmm. So uh, my first tip, number one is, Call or email them super early in the morning, East Coast time. The boss is at work early. He is there early. So if you want to get a hold of the guy who is the decision maker without any red tape, without the secretary being there, there's a good chance that if you call at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday through Friday, they will be there. They will pick up the phone. So that that's one tip. Another tip is um, my second tip, which works well when you're calling during hours, is just ask for them by first name, right? So if I'm calling the CEO of a company and Todd Welch is the CEO, I'm not calling and saying, hey, can I speak to Mr. Todd Welch? Or, hey, can I speak to Todd Welch? I'm calling and saying, hey, it's Nick. Can I, you put Todd on the phone? Mm -hmm. Right? And that'll usually cut um, at least some of the friction, whether it's red tape you know, a secretary or some kind of barrier to entry, those two things. So, yep. Act like you, you know, you're, you're someone, you know, we already you know, it's like get past the gatekeeper. Exactly. Exactly. We're somebody we already know. And by the way, we are people we already should know each other because we're here to make money. Right. That's the attitude. You're as is sales. I always tell people sales is easy. 
Sales is the process of giving someone what they already want anyway. Too often people think that sales techniques are you trying to sell something. That's the that's bad sales. <laughs> Good sales is just getting in front of somebody that already wants to do that. So, you know, vetting the list of suppliers and vetting who you want to open accounts with is important because they're probably in the business of doing that already. So there's not going to be a lot of friction when you're selling. This goes for any kind of sales. If you're, if you're doing really good sales, high sales, you're giving people what they want. So it's not hard to sell somebody something that they already want. And that's really the, the, the trick to sales, right? Is get in front of people that already want it. Yeah, and a lot of times you can find out uh, the person you want to talk to just by going on LinkedIn and looking up the company find out who the VP of sales is or whatever the case may be. And then you can address them by name, maybe look through their profile, find out some of their interests and likes, and then you got something to talk about too. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And I'll take it a step further to let you guys know how, how wild I am with it. I'm hawking them on, on all over the internet, right? I'm finding your Facebook. I'm finding your Twitter. I'm finding your LinkedIn. I'm finding your YouTube videos. I am searching you because the three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes of due diligence takes you miles with credibility, mm -hmm. miles with credibility, right? And it shows you're not just a cold call. You're not just another phone number. You're not just a random number that called today. No, oh, this is Nick. Oh, he looked me up. He looked, this funny guy looked me up on Facebook, right? You have something that helps you set yourself apart from the other people. So it builds a lot of credibility. I definitely recommend that. Yep, absolutely. I, I've used that in the past, uh, you know, like asking somebody about the baseball, their baseball team or something like that. Mm -hmm. you know, are the Braves going to beat the Yankees tomorrow night? What do you think? Or, you know, you got an immediate connection there. Yeah, great. You know, great book. Not, not that I, I Go buy my book, guys. But really, another great book recommendation is um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Great book, you know, great classic read on and, and I tell people that all the time when it comes to sales, go make friends. People are so worried about making sales. It's like, how about you have a guy that you can call? If you have a guy, if, if you can get to that level of relationship, mm -hmm. then it's not hard to make sales. Because then if you, if you really are genuine and authentic about it, you understand what they like. You understand what they need. And then you understand what to propose. Because you can't just, right, if you're being authentic, and you're like, hey, how's life going? What are you really doing? What are your real interests? Then when it's time to propose something, you're not going to be off the mark because hopefully you're proposing something that's in line with what they told you. It's not like you're coming from left field, you know? Yep, yep. You're not lying or deceiving. You're coming exactly. from a genuine place of wanting to help them. You know, I genuinely want to sell your products because I know I can do better. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. And that genuineness, people understand that communication is not all verbal, right? It's actually, I think there's a, I don't know how much it is, but I'm pretty sure it's like less than 30% is verbal. Yep. Some of it's tonality, the way you look, the way you talk, there's a lot of ways you can communicate, but yeah, authenticity, right? And I, I truly believe business is in service to others. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you're in, if you're in constant service to others, if you're constantly trying to help your customer and your suppliers and your supply chain, it's going to be very hard for you to lose. Yeah. Like if you're authentic about wanting to help these people, it's going to be very hard for you to lose. For sure. Absolutely. So this last step, the close is very simple for, for me, usually it's transacting guys, right? So in your situations, it's whatever forms they send you, fill them out, right? Fill, fill those things out. But if you're on the other side and you have some kind of other business, for me, I use a soft close. Again, goes back to everything we just talked about. I'm not trying to force something down your throat. More than likely, you already need what I'm selling, right? If you guys are calling these guys, they need it. They need it. What you need to do is explain to them why you're the right guy for the job. But trust me, if you're calling a, a, a product company, they need more sales. They want more sales. And as long as you continue to explain to them that you have the credibility and the resources and the know-how to give them more sales, mm -hmm. they will entertain you. So in this, you know, in my situation, I send them all. Um, and I also have a video of this process that I do if, if people are interested in this, in the warm lead aspect, 
and not so much the Amazon. On YouTube, I have a video where called the 15 minute close. I run down a couple examples, but here I just send them over a PayPal. I say, look, when you guys are ready to work, just let me know. When you guys are ready to go, just let me know. So I always leave it with that tone. It's not a hard close. It's not like, hey, I'll take your credit card information right now, right? It's, um, although I, I could do that. But like I said, it's more important for me to vet the prospect, show that I have good credibility, show that I understand what their problem is, that I listen to them. And in the book, I give examples of how I intertwine what they said in the first four minutes back into the conversation. So they understand I was listening. They understand, you know, that my my solution is the right solution for what they have, what's going on in their world. But then after it's a very soft close, because after that point, if you did your job well, they want it. They want it. So I don't apply pressure here because, again, when it goes back to communication, it's not all verbal. If you have someone that calls you every day and it's like, hey, man, I can really do this for you. Hey, man, I really, I really need you guys to sign up. Hey, man, I really need. Well, it, it's, it, there's another verbal cue or there's another communication cue to someone who says, look, I can absolutely do that for you. I'm here when you need me. And you hang up confidently, right? They get off the phone like, oh, that guy really knew what he was talking about. Right. So there's different ways to go about that. But the close is very simple and to the point. And what it basically does, the, the key here in the close section is transact, transact. So that means you're either getting a signed document or you're getting an account open or you're getting the form over the form emailed over to you. Right. I'm guessing that some of you guys looking for products are going and asking for accounts where the form isn't on the website. And they're like, who the hell is Todd? Who the hell is Nick? You know, why do I, why would I have you guys sell my product? I don't know who you are. Right. And that's kind of the rebuttal you're going at. So the close is, Hey, send me a, send me a, um, if you could send me over that document, I'll fill that out right away. Now, if you told them you're going to send something back, send it back. If you t it, give yourself a timeline, if you say, look, I'll have that over for you in 30 minutes, send it back in 15, not on minute 31, not on minute 32, because the impression continues. Right. So if you send that over at 31, that live that one minute late says a lot about you, about your credibility, about your processes. If you're late with that, what else can you be late with? What else can you miss? If you lied about that, what else can you lie about? So be very conscious of when you're engaging with them to 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 meet up your standard of what you said you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, we almost cut back in and out there. Yeah. So that that's my last point is really, you know, follow up with what you said you're going to do. So if you said you're going to do X, Y, Z, if you said you're this person, make sure you follow up with that, right? If you told them you're going to call back in 30 minutes or you're going to send something back in 30 minutes, follow up. If they say no and you say, okay, do you mind if I reach out another you know, 30 days, put it on your calendar and call back in 30 days. That goes a long way. You know, follow up, increase my sales tremendously, right? Tremendously. So the ability to leave a message and then call back or try again, right? When somebody at a, at a different time, and this is not every day, especially when you're cold calling, you don't want to call some cold call somebody every single day, but it's important that if they say no today, you come back. If it's, if it's a good enough product, come back in 14 days. Hey man, I want to know if you guys would ever think about reconsidering. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. I don't know if you guys remember and run down your credibility again, right? Yeah, things change all the time. So just because they said no today doesn't mean they'll say no 30 days from now, three months, six months from now. So you want to be following up for sure. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you an example. It's a little off par, but I think all these a lot of these business examples can be used in various contexts, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to buy a, a 14 unit apartment deal. It's not for sale not for sale okay so let's see product is product that do you guys in products know what this is like right you're trying to break through right so i go and talk to the guy who owns the building i finally get a hold of him, number one right but i pester to find him right finally get a hold of him. hey i want to buy your building it's not for sale it's not for sale nikki go away i want to keep my real estate okay 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 no problem no problem you want to have lunch no okay now, in this situation, that 15-minute close is longer, okay, guys? It took me about five months to close, but it was the same process. The first thing I did was build a relationship with this guy. 
So I'd go and I'd joke with him every day. He's down the street. You know, he owns buildings right next to my buildings. And every day I go, I go by and, hey, how's it going? How's it going, buddy? We'll call him buddy instead of his real name, right? How's it going? Everything going good. No talk about sales. Hey, you got any family? You got any friends, right? Building a rapport. Hey, what do you think about real estate investing? Why do you like it? Why do you not like it? Teach me something. And all I did was shut up for a month. And I listened to all of his pain points. And he's telling me which tenants don't pay. And he's telling me which, wh wh why is a pain in, why is a pain in the butt, you know, on Tuesdays instead of Wednesdays? And which plumbing issues are driving him nuts, right? Mm -hmm. And by the time, you know, I'm on day 45 and I start telling him, look, I'm credible. I got buildings next door, right? I went to law school. I went to business school. I've managed to keep these buildings running, building through that credibility process, right? Credibility process. And I'm talking to him from stuff that he talked to me. Oh, man, you should have seen how many times I told this guy, oh, man, you should just retire. I, and every pain point he gave me, I would throw back at him, right? Oh, you should retire. That plumbing's a pain in the butt. Oh, collecting rents, man. That's got to be tough today. Oh, I know. I can relate. In a joking manner to build this rapport. Long story, long story long, I bought the buildings. I mean, he managed to, and he owner financed them to the guys. He didn't just sell them to me. He gave me a sweetheart deal in the middle of the coronavirus right, to buy these buildings, but same process, build relationships. If your goal, instead of trying to get a company to let you sell their product is, hey, I would really like to be best friends with that CEO. Mm -hmm. If you start with that intent, if you start with that intent and you're genuine about it, right? Hey, I want to build a relationship with this product guy. I guarantee it is going to open the floodgates for you guys. Just yep. taking that approach alone. Yep. I, I can't agree more. I mean, it's relationships everywhere. You know, a lot of people might look at selling on Amazon as just like, oh, transactional and working on the computer, but it's like 75% building relationships with our suppliers. Yeah. Listen, I want I want to give them an aha moment. Hopefully this sets an aha moment to end on here, right? You guys are most of you guys watching this podcast are looking for products, right? Back to this relationship idea. If I could just be have a good relationship with this person, right? Mm -hmm. Almost anybody who's watching this right now can't tell me that if they had a relationship with the CEO of Maytag or the CEO of Nokia or the CEO of you know um, HP, right? That they wouldn't be put in a position that's more lucrative than someone trying to cold call. Yep. 100%. And just trying to get a product. Right. So the relationship first before the transaction, because if you solve that CEO's problem, they're going to hand you the keys to the Cadillac. <laughs> they're going to hand you your keys, man. You know, goes a long way. And that's why I love working with smaller brands and smaller distributors, because then, you know, nine times out of 10, the person answering the phone is the owner and you've got that. A connection immediately and can start building that relationship. Oh man, I can't say enough about vibing with people at your level or right above you and growing with them. Mm -hmm. Too many people try to reach up and grab, you know, that big supplier, that big contract or that big, instead of saying, who's around my level that I can add a ton of value to and level up with them. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I've, I've gotten into some of the biggest relationships and partnerships and deals of my life by following that exact principle. Yep. Yeah. I, I'd much rather open up an account with, uh, rather than Nike, I'd rather open up an account with Joe's shoelaces. Yeah. That guy I can connect with, get to know him, know, like, and trust him. And I know I can help them a lot. And by the way, he's the next Nike. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. People don't realize that that the Nike today isn't going to be the Nike tomorrow. The eBay's the, the accounts today aren't going to be the accounts tomorrow. It's a small guy that you want to attach your horse, you know, you attach your wagon to that horse and ride up with him as they grow. Help that person grow. No, I couldn't agree more, Todd. Yep. Yeah. And, and the bigger the company, too, the more you're just a number on a paper, right? And when it comes to budget time, they're like, okay, we can strike that out, save some money there. They're not thinking about, um, oh, well, Nicholas helped us with all this stuff. You know, maybe we shouldn't cut him out of the budget. Yeah, and when, when it's a small company, you become an indispensable arm, especially with what you guys are doing. 
Like you, you guys, you become an indispensable revenue line, revenue item producing, right? The, in the and the cash flow statement, they have revenue items, revenue, and then expenses. You guys get on that revenue line, and you guys become an indispensable part of small businesses. Yep. So yeah, I mean, I, you know, and we've talked about this, you know, with my current uh, job at 3DX Industries, talking about how, you know, we need help over there. We're gonna we're gonna bring on some team members over there, but. Yeah, it, it, it's it's tremendous to be that indispensable line, right? And then grow with them. And what comes from that is so much opportunity. Yep, hundred percent. All right, Nick. Well, this has been fantastic. Any last things you want to wrap up with? Yeah, run to the bag hats. Run to the bag hats available at runtothebag.com. It's a mindset. It's a a quote we started back at our holding company a couple years back for our interns. Is basically Look, run to your dreams. If you guys are out there, you guys have goals, aspirations, you know, it's right there for you. Most of them are not as far as you think, and you can get there. You can get there, man. Just run there. You know, don't don't walk there. Go there. Reach for it. It's not coming for you. You got to go to it. Uh, so run to the bag.com and follow me on all my social channels. Just Google me. And I appreciate the time, Todd. Awesome. And NicholasCoriano.com is your website. Um, and you mentioned the listeners can get 20% off of any of your services if they're interested. That's right. Mention, if you mentioned, you mentioned that you saw me on this podcast with Todd Welch. You can say that. So say that on the phone with me and I will give you 20% off of anything that is on nicholascoriano.com. For sure. And that you, you can help with so that includes, by the way, for those who don't know, go ahead. Business plans, exactly. Business plans, pitch decks. I was going to list everything you get 20% off. Yeah, business plans, pitch decks, LLC formations, uh, website design, um, basically anything from the napkin to the NASDAQ. If you want to start a business, um, any from the time idea creation, logos, all the way to the time you want to take it into a full-fledged business, I offer services. Just go on my website. I have all the services there. And mention Todd Welch and subscribe to this channel wherever this is playing. And share this video wherever this is playing. All right. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Nick. You have an awesome one. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much, Todd. Have a great time and uh, we'll talk soon. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.